Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take a SketchUp model and overlay it onto a video and animate how the objects appear over time. So I did this in my latest video where I revealed my tiny house studio project that I'm gonna be working on over this summer. And I had a few people ask me how I did this. So let's look at the overall workflow and then we're gonna dive in step by step. So step one is to add section planes to the groups that you want to animate. Step two is to export a frame from the video that you wanna overlay and then use match photo to align your model to match that image. Step three is to create several scenes from that same camera perspective that animate section planes being activated one by one over time. Step four is to make some changes to your style so you have a green background that you can key out in your video editing software. Step five is to export an animation. And step six is to bring that movie into your video editing software so you can key out the background and have it overlay your video. All right, so this is the model that I used in that video. And we have um, just a few different groups here. We have the rafters and the walls. And what we wanna do is animate the rafters and the walls to appear over time. So we want the walls to come up first and then the rafters to uh, appear after that. All right, so the first thing we need to do is add the section planes to the various groups that we have in this model. So I'm gonna just temporarily hide the rafters group and we're gonna jump into the wall group to add the section plane because we wanna limit the section cuts effects to the contents of that group. We don't wanna actually clip out the entire model. We just wanna clip out what's in this specific group. So we're gonna jump inside. And before I add the section plane, I just want to make note that we are using just the, one of the standard styles. So in the default styles, the construction documentation style, that's the current style that we, we have. And I just want you to uh, take note that as soon as you add a uh, section plane to the model, notice how uh, display section planes is currently disabled. And if we go into edit and look here, we can see um, this reflects the same thing. This style definition has section planes turned off. Now watch what happens when we add a section plane to the model. So I'm gonna grab the section plane uh, and I'm gonna tap up on my keyboard to lock to the blue axis and I'm going to click to place the section. We'll click okay. Um, so notice how section planes automatically became visible when you insert a section plane and the thumbnail updated to tell us that our current style settings no longer match the settings that were saved in this specific style definition. So that's gonna be important later on when we go to create our scenes. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna jump back to this later. So I wanna select this section plane, grab the move tool with the letter M on my keyboard, and I'm just gonna move this down to completely clip away the um, all of the walls. So when this gets animated, it's gonna rise up like this and show and reveal the walls. So we need to just place it down here to hide everything. And if we jump back to the outliner, I'm gonna actually just group all of these subcomponents uh, just for clarity here. So we have the, the wall group and inside the wall group, I just created a subgroup and then here's the section plane that we just created. All right, so now we need to add another section plane to the rafters. So let's unhide the rafters group. We'll double click to enter. We'll grab the section plane. I'm gonna tap uh, the right arrow key on the keyboard to lock that right axis. We'll place this over here. And by the way, if you, um, if you insert a section and it's, and it's facing the wrong direction, you know, we actually want this to be going the other way. You can actually just right click on a section plane and click reverse and that'll reverse the direction for you. So we'll grab the move tool and we'll just move this over here to completely clip that out. 
So over here, again, I'm gonna just uh, create a, a child group here just for clarity so we can see both of these uh, section planes. Now, if you're not gonna overlay this over a photo or a video, you can actually create your scenes right now and just animate you know, different objects appearing in your model, which is kind of cool. So you can just go right to the Scenes tab and uh, you want to have both of these section planes active, which they are currently, they are both currently active because we can't see um, anything that's in those groups. So this is kind of our starting point. So this is gonna be our first scene. So we'll click add scene. And this warning window uh, has to do with the style override that I was talking about earlier. So if I cancel that out and we look at the styles, see how we have this that says uh, it's indicating that our current style settings don't match the style definition that we have selected. So whenever you try to save a scene, when you have overridden some style properties, SketchUp doesn't know what to do with that. So you could take those overrides and save it as a new style. That's the first option here. Or you might wanna update the existing style um, with those changes or do nothing. So basically it'll disregard any overrides you've made to the style and it will revert back to whatever that original definition was saved as. So in this case, this is what we wanna do because we actually don't want to uh, see the section planes when we play back the animation. We just want to see the section planes now so we can easily activate and deactivate them. So we're gonna do nothing to save changes and we'll create that scene. And then the next scene we're gonna want to jump in here and disable this section plane. And we'll save that as the next scene. And then the third one is gonna be disabling this section plane and adding that as a scene. And so now when we go back to scene one, this is gonna kind of reset everything for us. Now make sure that you have if you go to window model info, you need to have animation enabled, uh, or I, I should say enable scene transitions enabled in order for this effect to work, uh, because there needs to be a certain uh, duration between the scenes. Otherwise, it's just gonna, it's not gonna animate, it's just gonna appear like that, okay? So um, typically when I'm modeling, I disable this feature because I just wanna go to the scene, I don't wanna wait for the animation, but in this case, since we're doing this, you need to have that enabled. So now we're starting at the default scene and then we go to scene two, we can see the walls animate up and scene three, the rafters animate like that. All right, so that's really cool to play with and you can actually um, do this with a ton of groups. The only thing is you can only have one section plane active per context. So you need to make sure, you know, the section planes are kind of nested within groups and components in order for you to be able to control multiple section planes um, simultaneously. Now, the only thing you need to do differently if you're gonna be overlaying this on a photo or video is to use match photo to align your model to the image. So in my case, I actually have a, uh, a frame from a video that I exported that I'm gonna import going to camera match new photo. So here's the terrible uh, freeze frame that I imported and now I can align it to my model. Now I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to use match photo here. Um, I have a really in depth uh, tutorial on how to, to follow like an easy method on how to use match photo. I'll link that in the description and in the card above if you wanna learn more about how to use this feature. But I'm gonna just do this really quickly so we're not um, wasting a lot of time. Okay, not perfect, but good enough for this, uh, this tutorial. All right, so once I have the match photo aligned, we do need to make a few tweaks to the style um, as we go through this. Uh, the first thing right now is to turn off, if you go into edit and you go to modeling settings, you wanna turn off the foreground photo so you can actually see 
the, uh, the you know the the model in front of the photo. And also, side note: if you are doing this on a video, you want to try not to have anything in front of where the model appears. So, like if I walked in front of the model here um, in the video, uh, the model's going to appear in front of me, and it kind of ruins the effect. So just try to keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna just update this style. We'll collapse that. I'm gonna go back to the scenes and just delete these ones here. So I'm just kind of starting from square one. So whenever you insert a match photo, a scene will be created automatically for you. That's what this is here. And it's just named after the, the name of the image. All right, so now we just need to create and configure our different scenes. So instead of, uh, since we don't have section planes active right now, we could turn them on and, and click on those to activate them. But I'm gonna show you a different way to do that uh, while keeping that turned off. If you just go down to the outliner, you can actually interact with sections uh, directly inside the outliner. So I can right click on that section and make that an active cut and I can do the same thing here. And it's just highlighted because we have it selected. But if we click outside the group, that will disappear. And so now we wanna just go back up to our scenes and we wanna update the scene to save active section planes. So currently, none of these options are being saved. Um, so all we need to do is just click that checkbox and now this scene will remember that those two active section planes uh, should be active. And let's just double click this again to just reset the camera view because we want each scene to be identical as far as the camera location. And it's a little bit tricky when you're working with Match Photo because it doesn't allow you to toggle the camera location here. You just wanna be sure that you're using the actual camera location that's saved in that original scene. So once we've double clicked this to verify that, we can go ahead and click the Add Scene button to duplicate, essentially you're duplicating that scene, and then we'll go down to the section here, turn this one off, and then to update this scene with the, the new section plane status, we can just turn that off and then turn it back on, and that essentially refreshes or updates just that one, um, that one property. So that's just a little bit faster than like going and clicking update and then clicking that and clicking update. You can just kind of toggle that really quick and it does the same thing. All right, so now we need one more scene. So we're gonna click the plus sign again and we're gonna go ahead and turn off this one and we'll toggle this once more. So now we can reset this and if we toggle scene two, there goes the walls and then scene three paints the rafters. All right, so we got the scene set up. Now all we have to do is finalize a few more style settings and we'll be good to go. So when you're exporting this, you obviously don't wanna see the image. So you need to go back into styles, go into the edit tab, go to the modeling settings, and you wanna actually turn off the background photo. So this is kind of the only way to like have a match photo scene, but like not see the match photo. There's no way to really disassociate a match photo from a scene, um, which I kind of feel like you should be able to do that. You should be able to just be like, you know, convert to regular scene or whatever, but you can't do that. So you have to just create the style. You have to change the style settings to turn off uh, both the match photos, the foreground and background. And then the next thing we need to do is actually add a background color to this scene. Now, I know what you're thinking. Matt, can't you export an image that has a transparent background? Why, yes you can. You can go up to File, Export, 2D Graphic, select a PNG, and when you go to the Options, there is this nice little option that says transparent background. So you can actually export transparent PNGs from SketchUp. However, um, if you go to the animation, and the animation is gonna export a video going through uh, each scene one by one. And you can see here, I've been experimenting with this. But if you select PNG image set, it will export individual images as you can see here, the problem is if you go to options, there's no way to select a transparent background, which I find kind of strange because you can do it if you're just exporting an image, but you can't do it if you're exporting uh, a video or a, a image set. 
So what you need to do instead, unfortunately, is in the edit tab, if you go to the background settings, we wanna just change this color to like a, a neon green. Now this kind of hurts my eyes and probably your eyes too. So I'm gonna just tone this down a little bit so it's not super bright, but you kind of want it bright because you wanna, you wanna have a color that's not gonna occur in the model itself so it's easier to key out. And then you wanna make sure you update the style, otherwise your scenes are not gonna um, show those changes when the animation goes through. And then the last step is to just go to File, Export, Animation, and you wanna select an MP4, and under the options, you know, you can select your resolution, the line scale multiplier, um, so that's gonna scale the edges in your model by that factor. You can select a frame rate, and you can check these out as well, but those aren't too important. We'll click OK and export, and SketchUp will now export an animation of your scenes. So then in your video editing software, I mean, yours is gonna be a little bit different than this. This is This happens to be Camtasia, um, but you wanna look for a certain effect. So it, it'll either be, you know, this is obvious, remove a color, um, it'll, it'll probably be called like keying or alpha mat, something like that. And so when you apply that uh, effect to that clip, you'll see all the green disappears and I can adjust that tolerance so I can get rid of that fringe. And then the model will animate itself over time while you're playing the video. So that's it, that's how you do it. Um, it's a little bit tricky, um, but it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like a cool little effect you can do. I didn't spend a lot of time. I probably could have you know, gotten that uh, a little bit better in my previous video. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, I, I would be very grateful um, I'm actually getting so close to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, I've only got like a few hundred more to go. So every sub counts and I'd be really grateful uh, for your subscription to my channel. All right, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.